Hey guys, this is an example from a game of students of mine. And let's get right into it. So white has this impressive looking pawn on e7. Now black really should have started challenging that pawn right away with queen d6. Um, you know, it's a good strategy, guys, to challenge your opponent's strengths, to fight back against them. I mean, if you see a really strong pawn like that, you really don't want to just allow it to stay on the board forever. And basically, black is fine. I mean, white either has to kind of go in a relatively passive direction with rookie one to guard that pawn, and then black obviously has counterplay with his d pawn, or white can go queen f3, threatening queen f7, and forcing black to kind of take this pawn and trade here and it's just going to be an equal position. So black was not in any danger, but they did not have a sense of urgency about white's pawn and they basically just wasted a move with queen c6. So this is going to set up a very interesting situation on the board. So white played queen f3 and okay, it's not a secret what white wants. Yeah, there's a checkmate on f8 coming. So black played h6 and so the question is, can white win this position? I mean, can they somehow use this opportunity that's been gifted to them with this mediocre, or I would say, but poor queen c6 move and um, somehow make use of their pass pawn and their strong relationship on the f file of the queen and the rook? So I had a feeling like something should be possible. I liked this move, but then the question is what to do next? Like, I mean, how do you break through? Um, obviously there is no big value in that check, it just doesn't do anything. The king could even go back or queen g6 maybe a move as well. So how do we generate winning ideas here? Well, the move we really want to do is rook f7. But the problem is there is a back rank issue, right, on c1. So I was thinking, okay, h3, right, it seems like a really natural try. But then I realized it doesn't quite work. I was like, yeah, I was uh, puzzled by this. I was like, okay. I mean, it seems like none of this works anyway, because despite the fact that we gave the king a square off the back rank, black still has enough resources against our king. So, you know, the block obviously is not going to help. And if you bring the rook back, then you're not threatening checkmate anymore. So how to get around this? Well, the computer offered a quite surprising option, guys. The move h4. Now this move is so surprising because we've got queens on the board and it's pretty rare that like extending your pawn so far when you've got queens on the board is a good idea. But look at the point of this. I mean, it's all about the king, right? So it's just basically a version of h3 that works better. So let's say they go here. Now we still don't go here. It's still too early. And the reason is that they go here, here, here. And even though the king can now try that, it still doesn't really matter because there's still no way out of these checks. Yeah, on g4, the queen will just come back to c3. So what do we do? Well, it turns out we just keep going further with the pawn. And I mean, yes, this is a very beautiful idea of securing your king, guys, and a prophylaxis. Um, basically, the point is that rook f7 is getting prepared, and your king's ability to escape perpetual check is getting prepared. So let's say the pawn goes further, this, and like key point is something like that, right? Is that in this position, you can either win with king h4 or you can win with g4, right? So it's like the whole h4, h5 idea is a way to just secure your king from this perpetual, I found to be pretty brilliant, you know? And, you know, ultimately it's kind of like you're looking for a solution to your problem, right? Like you understand that you've got the initiative here, that you've got this really strong pass pawn, that black is kind of paralyzed and tied down, um, but you have some obstacles, right? And the obstacle is that you can't win without your rook. And you also can't win without king safety. 
right? So it's kind of possible with some deep thinking to eventually land on this idea, guys. It is definitely unusual, which is why I'm showing it to you, right? It's just very pretty that the key winning moves are like these moves with the H pawn, right? So yeah, you're not going to see a whole lot of this. I don't think I've ever seen something exactly like this. But still, um, as a prophylactic idea, and you know, I have told you guys I would show you a lot of examples of prophylactic thinking, um, you know, this works quite nicely, you know, and also you kind of just take the g6 square away from their queen, that's also another nice point, although I guess if you play rook f7, you know, you're, and they can't really ever use that defense because they would just lose the rook on e8, right? So, so yeah, guys, in chess, you want to identify your main problem, like what is stopping me from winning? And then start thinking about, you know, the possible ways to solve it.